gods and goddesses, who brings a baseball bat to a celestial battle? My name's Anuki. Let's find out. Oh, wow. Keeping this cheap and cheerful, it's a boundary pushing one for Thanatos and Bakasora. These two overfed pigeons risk it for a biscuit, and tower dive out Kwang, who prepares a whopper of an ultimate, followed by his secret special run around like a headless dragon technique. There was no artillery strike or artillery support since Thanatos was wiped out quickly. Bakasora is just too full, he can't possibly eat anymore. His head pops off as his stomach explodes. It's good to be small and force your opponents to look down. He ain't no gnome, he's Cupid, and he's got to get rid of these bad vibes. Apollo supported by Athena, rock on fourth. Cupid is just so low, it's irresistibly chasey. Before he reaches the tower, some sharp, sugary, flawlessly fluttery jukes gets him to home sweet home. The two poke into the tower just to try and get that last hit. Ymir goes for the cyber boom, and Cupid ain't done yet. He comes back to fire the most unnecessary hard bomb of the week. Wouldn't want a zombie Apollo now, would we? Cupid somehow finds the safe spot within the flurry of attacks, and so beautiful. Ymir is quick to take the opportunity to come in from behind and confine the enemy with crowd control and shards of ice. That kill was just cold-hearted. Agni, two. Suda Galvis as Tia is out of ultimates, but plenty on enemies. Artemis, Thor, and Ymir. Tia's passive won't keep him stunned for long. The Red Trio are blocking his escape with their presence. He tries to find a way past. He gets a minuscule amount of healing and turns in the opposite direction. Then evades, suppress the insolent by moving back on himself, plowing straight through the deadly free and towards Agni, who has given him right of passage. A fantastic Noxious Fuming Stun gives Tyr more breathing room, but then Ao Kwong goes over the frickin' mountaintop with a big dragon attack to slice that last nibble of health the warrior has. Pseudogalvis avoids it anyway as he moves safely to the Fire Giant's domain, thanking his supportive teammates along the way. The bravery of Tyr pays off in the end as the enemy didn't expect him to charge head-on first into all three of them. Meanwhile, Josie the Agni was en route and provided a secondary surprise luxury bailout. Notice his positioning gave Tyr right of way. Let your vulnerable take the shortest route to a line of sight blocker. He not so casually avoids the spirit's tempest, though a squall would have worked. Thor tries to locate Tyr with his Anvil of the Dawn when the rest of the Team Blue arrives to chase away the enemy. Isis. Keep your eye on the birdie, Fenrir gets smothered by Thor's Anvil of the Dawn, and just when the tables look like they have turned with a defensive circle of Ragnarok, the beast lets rip a spirit's tempest. Thor escapes to Mjolnir as Athena taunts lining up the two for a tectonic shift, but for what purpose? A questionable throw from Sobek, which puts Isis in a nightmare. He tries to resolve it with lurking in the waters, which hits all three enemies. Apollo lands in as Cupid arrives to this 2v4, and the positioning works to Cupid's advantage. The Fields of Love raises the heart rate of the enemy and lowers their health. Two hearts explode, next to hit the dirt is Apollo. Last is that wriggly worm, you just can't catch him. Why do they always try to sliver away? Cupid is the god of love, and he loves nothing more than showing no mercy. Turnip detonates his last heart bomb, and the result is an unofficial quadra. Team Blue kept within hooking distance of each other, which attracted the attention of Cupid. His fields of love and heart bomb was a paddling pool of splash damage, which seized victory. In an amazing feat, Turnip, the Cupid uses the map to block Ao Kuang's squall, then chases him all the way to the Gold Fury for the final kill.
for mana. Oh, wow. This big boy has a big attitude and a giant bat tailored for maximum head injuries, which he unleashes upon Sun Wukong. He takes his beats into the wild, trailing a few glow stick wielding minions with him. Ao Kuang then launches a gust of wind into Wukong's back, knocking him out. The scattered fighting becomes tighter, forming a 2v2. Ao Kuang keeps Gep occupado whilst the V-Man deals with Amazenka. The Killer B realizes the mana, no mana, and begins trading blows, but the Bruiser build gangster is built perfectly for this scenario. He tries to protect his beehive for increased damage, but it's a mathematical miscalculation which makes his demise. Am I hungry? Rushes to Ao Kuang's aid. A perfect Aegis as Geb was about to steamroll him. The mana fancies his chances against the hide of the Nemean lion, but it's proving difficult to penetrate. Trait. Now welcome to the deadliest smite chasers this hard criminal thinks he can get away with two counts of god slaughter. Dispatch has caught for a giant steamrolling boulder, but the criminal escapes on blink. It was a severe drought of mana for many gods in the fight, so ability choices were critical. The manas clear the path, oddly being knocked up, but still resuming against Geb's knockup on Shockwave afterwards. Amazon Cow feeling very confident about his potential, given a shield, and then goes for backup plan B. Use the honey to slow and gain a ranged advantage. We know this doesn't work, and after that bug is stomped, Geb begins Operation Bowling Ball. But what he doesn't realize is you can never catch the dragon. Foodgasm saves himself with an Aegis and makes it safely back home. He won't be safe when Boy Am I Hungry gets home, though. I sense a tasty, well-deserved, all-you-can-eat dragon buffet. Geb, however, returns home without a friend. Send in your top five plays by checking the video description. I'm Anuki. I'm rolling into the jungle.